What's going on guys, John Nolder here from CourseTherapy.com and in this video, I'm going to talk about which screen capture software you should use when making your videos. Alright, welcome to the Daily Udemy Income Report, the show where I talk about making money on Udemy, walk you through what's working for me, and teach you how to do the same thing. My name is John Nolder from CourseTherapy.com and today is Monday, February 11th, 2019. In this episode, I want to spend a few minutes talking about the different types of screen capture software you can use to create your online courses and recommend the one that I use and tell you why I recommend it. But before we do that, let's take a look at the numbers from the weekend. So we have Friday, Saturday, and Sunday's numbers. And let me tell you, it was a monster of a weekend. Eight courses sold on Friday, four on Saturday, and 10 on Sunday. So not a whole lot of activity this weekend, especially Saturday. So Friday, we had eight courses sold, $49.45, which is actually pretty good. Um, that comes to $6.18. We had a couple of like $11 and $9 um, courses sold there. And also a, a promotional email of mine that I, not a promotional email. I have a website that has all my courses listed and has a promo code attached to each one. Somebody found that website, clicked on one of the links. So I made nine or 10 bucks from that. That's why this earned per, per course is, you know, higher than normal. Refunds to date, 16.88, five reviews, and we'll take a look at those in a minute. Saturday, four courses sold, $8.89. That came to $2.12 per course. Uh, a couple of those courses, I kid you not, were like $1.20 I got uh, revenue from. So not a good day. Probably, probably the lowest day we've had since we started this uh, morning income report. Uh, refunds to date stayed the same, and two reviews, not great. Yesterday, Sunday, more courses sold, 10, $40, not bad, $4.06. Refunds stayed the same, no reviews. I don't know if the review system is down or what's going on. It was just a dead weekend, that's how that goes. So month to date, we'll just go to yesterday, is $482.17, 10 days into the week, into the month, I should say. Not particularly great, but it's February. Februarys are always slow. 96 courses sold, 48 reviews. Promotional activity bopped up from $10 to $21 over the weekend. Like I said, I had one course. Somebody clicked on one of my links on my website. Uh, total enrollment is 113187 and average rating stays at 4.49. So really quickly, let's take a look at the reviews. We didn't have very many. We had four and a half stars, five stars, four stars, four stars. Not great. Five stars, four stars. Oh, five stars. This course was exactly what I was looking for. I had played with Django many years ago and wanted to check it out again. The length of the course was fantastic. I even learned a few things about Bootstrap. The pacing was a little quick, and while I could keep up and pause when necessary, some beginners may have trouble keeping up. But you can always slow down or pause if needed, so I'm fine with the pacing overall. Better to be a list quick than too slow. John was a great instructor and seemed to be having fun with it. Kudos for the great course. Excellent. Very good review. And that's it for reviews. So not many reviews. And looking over our landing page, as always, we still have not re-entered any of those badges. We haven't regained any of those badges. So uh, that's that. So for the rest of this video, I want to spend a few minutes talking about screen capture software. Now I've talked about all the all other all kinds of things in this uh, morning show, from the different mics that I use to the lights and uh, sound treatments for the rooms, but I haven't really talked about the software that I use to actually record my courses. And you really only have a couple of options if you're on a Windows computer. If you're on a Mac, I'm not going to talk about that because I don't have a Mac. Uh, but the things I'm going to talk about in this video also have a Mac version. So you just uh, sort of follow along like that. So the big thing that most people use, the big software, the sort of standard software is something called Camtasia. And it's by techsmith.com. Uh, yeah, dot com. And you can see Camtasia 2018, which looks like the latest version, is $249. If you add maintenance, which I don't know why you would, that's another 50 bucks. So $250 to $300 for this software. And, you know, that's fine if you have the money and you want to spend it. I used Camtasia for many years. I bought an older version. I think I paid about $300 for it, oh, maybe a decade ago. And I still use it for some things. It captures the screen. So this thing you're seeing right here, all of this, this is screen capture software. It's capturing my mouse as it moves around the screen. It's capturing the screen, screen capture. 
So you're definitely going to need something like that, especially if you're doing like a coding course or anything that has screen stuff. Anything besides a talking head thing will require screen capture software. So like I said, like Udemy even has tutorials on how to set up Camtasia, how to use the settings correctly to best optimize for Udemy. It's just everybody uses this software. And if you have the money and you want to use it, that's fine. Go right ahead. I'm going to recommend something that I use and have for about a year now, open broadcast software. Now, this is at obsproject.com. It is completely free. It has a Windows version, a Mac version, and a Linux version. I should say the Camtasia also has a Mac version as well. So if you have a Mac, you can use that. Uh, but this is it. This is what it looks like here, uh, sort of. This is uh, the standard screen. You can change it around, um, and I'll show you in just a minute how I do it. But this will capture your screen. It is screen capture, but it's so much more. It's really a broadcast software, and there is a little bit of learning curve. You're going to have to watch some YouTube videos to understand how to use this thing, but it is so worth it. For one thing, it's free, which is better than $250 from Camtasia. But for another thing, it just it blows Camtasia out of the out of the water. All Camtasia does is capture your screen. And you can also edit in Camtasia afterwards. OBS does not have an editor. So what you're going to do with this software is you're going to capture your screen, save the file, and then you're going to take that file into another piece of software to actually edit it. And I've talked about a free editing software that I've used in the past on this morning show. You can go back and watch it, search the, search the channel, browse around, you'll be able to find it. So it's sort of a two-step process with OBS, but it's totally worth it because it, this software comes with so many things. And the most important thing that I think comes with is the audio inputs. So Camtasia will, you can tell Camtasia to use your microphone and it will, but that's it. That's all it does. It'll just use your microphone. With OBS, you can tell it use the microphone and also use these plugins. What are plugins? Plugins are little pieces of software that you can install that do things. So if you heard me in real life, I would not sound like I sound in this video. My voice is higher. Uh, you know, I'm, a, I'm six foot four. I'm a real tall, skinny guy. In this video, in all my videos, my, my voice sounds deeper. Well, that's because I'm using a plugin to add a little bass to my voice. I'm using a plugin uh, to automatically remove, remove the breathing noises. So normally when you record, the microphone picks up your breathing. So every time you stop and take a breath, the microphone picks up that air noise that <sighs> I just did it really loud that time. Maybe it came through. Well, I've got a plugin in OBS that removes that sound automatically. So I used to have to go through and edit out every single time I took a breath <sighs> and that noise came through, I would edit that out in editing software. It would take days to go through a two or three hour course and edit out all the breathing. OBS takes it out automatically as you record. It will, you could put noise gates in. So for instance, if you've got a, if you're in a little room that's really hot and you've got a fan blowing on you, you can have that fan sound automatically removed as you're recording. If you're in a house with a lot of kids and they're making noise in the other room, you can have that software take that sound out automatically as you're recording. It is fantastic. Now, there's a lot of different plugins. You can be overwhelmed. It's kind of hard to set up. You have to then play with the plugins to get them to sound correctly. So there is most definitely a huge learning curve here. But if you can figure it out, and I'll talk about how to figure it out in other episodes, it's just it's just amazing software. So I've got it, I'm running it right now. Let's see if I can pull it over to this screen and expand it a little bit. You could see. And this is actual like studio software. So this is the scene right here that we're currently recording. On the left hand side, you can create a different um, a different scene. And then you click a button and it'll fade it in from this side to this side and start recording. All kinds of stuff you can do. So, you know, it's just amazing software and it's completely free. So I'm not going to talk about in this video how to set it up, how to run it all of those things, because I'm not going to lie to you, it is hard to learn at the beginning. And you need like a dedicated course that teaches you how to do it. There's some free ones on YouTube. If you can search and find them, they're a good place to start. But really, it's just a matter of getting in there and tinkering with it until you figure it out. Um, like I said, in the future, I'll probably create a course on OBS that 
shows how I use it with my specific settings and my specific plugins. But, you know, on your own, it, it is tricky. But for free and as powerful of, as it is, it's worth it. Now, the question becomes, are you serious or not? Is this an actual job for you? Are you just creating a course sort of, you know, willy nilly just to see if it works? Well, if that's the case, don't bother learning OBS. It's overkill for you. But if you're going to do this as your job, if this is going to be your income, you're 100% dedicated to doing this, I definitely recommend spending a few days to learn this software and to use it. It's just, it's really amazing software. And I can't believe it's free. And I can't believe it took me this long to find it and start using it. But man, I'm not glad that I did. So that's it for today's report. If you like this episode, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to this channel, and check out CourseTherapy.com for more tips, tricks, and online course awesomeness. My name is John Elder from CourseTherapy.com. We'll see you again tomorrow morning.